and welcome back to Came Cracker. Today we're going to be looking at acidity, describing acidity. Now, there are different ways to describe acidity. One way is to describe it in terms of strength. So we might describe an acid as very strong or weak. Another way to describe acidity is using concentration. You see, an acid might be concentrated or it might be dilute. But what do these two terms mean? And how does that affect acidity? We're going to take a closer look. Now, acid strength describes how dissociated or how ionized an acid is in aqueous solution. In other words, when it dissolves in water. So, we say strong acids are fully ionized. It means that there is 100% dissociation in aqueous solution. Okay? So, if I had a million molecules of HA, all of them will turn into ions. And that is what we call a strong acid. So in a strong acid, we have many ions and few or no molecules at all. In other words, the equilibrium is to the far right. On the other hand, in a weak acid, what you have is the opposite. The equilibrium lies to the left. So what you have is many molecules and few ions. A good way to describe a weak acid is to say that it's an acid that is only slightly ionized in aqueous solution. The vast majority of the acid will be in the form of the molecule, not ions. Now concentration is different. Concentration has to do with how many molecules are actually in a certain volume of solution. So for example, you might have a 10 mole per dm cube solution. That would be described as concentrated versus a 0 0.01 mole per dm cube solution, which would be taken as dilute. Now, obviously, the 10 molar acid solution would be more active, more reactive than the 0 0.01 mole per dm cube. So, if I have 10 molar HCl and I react it with a metal, the reaction will be much more vigorous than if I used 0 0.01 mole per dm cube. So, obviously, if the acid is more concentrated, it's more active. But when you think about the acid, what's the active ingredient? It is the H+. Right? So if you have a more concentrated solution, you're going to have more H plus ions and hence a more vigorous reaction. But strength also plays a role, right? Obviously, if I have a 10 molar HA solution and it is only 50% dissociated, then the concentration of H plus would be only 5 molar, right? If it is 5% dissociated, then it's 0.5 molar. So the degree of dissociation or the strength also plays a role in the concentration of the H plus ions. Remember, the H plus ions are the active ingredient in an acid. The active ions in an acid, those are the ones that really react. So how do we account for both factors which affect the amount of H plus in a solution? We use what we call pH. We're going to look at pH more closely. Now, since we know that it's the H plus ions which are the active ingredient in an acid, then we have to figure out a way to measure the H plus ions that is more precise and accurate than using these vague concentration terms, whether it's concentrated or dilute, or vague strength term whether it's very strong or weak acid. So scientists came up with this measurement called pH. And the pH is, will be a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. And that will give us an exact value that we can work with, a precise value that we can work with. Now, the word P here is a mathematical operation. So pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration, square brackets meaning concentration. So this minus log is a mathematical operation 
corresponds to this letter here, P. So when we see P in acid-base equilibrium, that's what it really means. It's a negative log to the base 10 of something. Now, why did they use negative log? Now, the logging of the H plus concentration is done to reduce the numbers. And that's because the H plus concentration of solutions vary widely. So you could have a 10 molar solution or, or 18 molar solution of, of sulfuric acid. And you can go up or down to something like a 1 times 10 to the minus uh, 20. You know, 18 molar to 1 times 10 to the minus 20 molar solution or even less. So the, the big spread means that you have to have a way to compress the numbers into numbers that we can work with as um, scientists. So one of the ways to do that is to log the number so that the numbers become smaller and more compressed. And the negative sign is there because lots of solutions have such dilution that they are 10 to the minus something. So when you negative it, you get a positive number.